Hey guys, what is up and I welcome each and every one of you to a new League of Legends video. So today is the day we'll be taking a look at the biggest changes coming to next patch, patch 8.21. And this is going to be somewhat of a questionable patch with a bunch of changes that I feel like a lot of people aren't going to be very happy about. But regardless, if you guys end up enjoying this video, then don't forget to hit that like button, but let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. So the first thing to talk about is going to be almost like a double event happening next patch with of course the Halloween skins and the Halloween event itself and on top of that the new KDA skins and event as well. So in regards to Halloween we have three new Halloween skins coming out. We have Trick or Treat Echo, we have Count Kledula or I don't know how the hell you pronounce that and Bewitching Janna. All three of these skins are honestly quite fantastic, and I think the Kled one is especially fantastic because Kled not only doesn't have enough skins, but this one actually looks really damn cool. And on top of this, we also have the new KDA kind of girl group coming out, which is going to be skins for KDA Ari, Akali, Evelyn, and Kaisa. And on top of this, there's going to be a new type of skin coming out called Prestige KDA Kaisa. This thing is kind of like a VIP skin where it'll cost you 2,500 world tokens to get it. But that's not it, because with these new events coming out, that also means there's going to be new missions coming out, most likely giving you free loot as long as you actually complete the missions. There's going to be new icons coming out, and on top of this, there's also going to be new orbs coming out for the KDA. It's going to be a KDA bag and a KDA orb. So if you want me to do another Guinea Pig Red Mercy $100 opening video for that, then let me know by either hitting the like button and or writing a comment down below. But now let's actually get into the buffs and the nerfs coming over to the champions and the first of which is going to be towards Alistair where his base HP has actually been lowered by quite a bit, 40. Now the very moment Alistair is without question the best support, extremely overpowered and this is going to nerf his laning phase by quite a bit so that he can't just go kind of brainlessly into the enemy team and make plays, you'll have to actually think about it a little bit more because now he has 40 less base HP so that means he is going to die that much faster so you have to be a little bit more careful and actually think about what you're going to do. Moving along, we have some quick changes coming over to Aurelian Saul, where his base HP has also been lowered by about 52, but his HP regeneration has been increased from 1.3 to 1.4. I think this is a similar concept and a nerf as it was to Alistair, where Aurelian Saul is known for the earlier parts of the game, especially level 1 and level 2, where all they do is turn on their W and just push in the wave, and most champions can't really do anything about that other than just simply getting pushed in, so it kind of feels very anti-fun, and this nerf is going to make Aurelian Saul a lot lot squishier at those parts of the game. So if you're a champion that can actually maybe all in him or something like that, or just at least try to harass him, that harass or that all in will be much more punishable to the Aurelian Saul since they're now a lot weaker. Following this, we have a buff already coming to the new reworked Ezreal, and this is going to be towards his W ability, where the damage on this has just overall been increased as you rank it up to an extra 20 base damage by rank 5. Now, Ezreal at the moment, actually surprisingly to me, is not very good. I don't think he's strong, I don't think he does a lot of damage, and whenever I see him on the enemy team, I feel like it's actually kind of a free win. And honestly, adding an extra 20 damage by rank 5 of his W, I don't think is going to make that much of a difference, considering you do usually max your W second, unless of course you're playing AP Ezreal, and for whatever reason, maxing your W first, but even then, I still don't think it's that much of a buff. Following this, we finally have some nerfs coming to Aurelia. Now, this champion is arguably the most overpowered champion in League of Legends in general at the very moment, so I'm glad Riot finally has decided to nerf Aurelia, but unfortunately, as we actually look at what the nerf is, her base movement speed has been lowered by 5, and that's literally it. So, I don't know, I think Riot at this point is just honestly memeing us, I don't really see how they actually believe this is a legitimate nerf, at least not to a champion like Irelia, so yeah, I mean I guess we're just losing 5 move speed for Irelia and that's all we're getting for this patch, a little bit disappointing, the champion is definitely really strong, and I feel like Riot is uh, literally memeing us. Next up, we have a buff coming over to a champion, a jungler more specifically, that we haven't seen in quite some time, and I feel like a lot of people don't really miss. That champion is going to be Ivern, and the buffs are as follows. His base movement speed has actually been increased by 5, so getting the reverse Irelia treatment, but on top of this, his W Brushmaker has had his damage increased at the earlier parts of the ability's rank, but it evens out by rank 5 at 60 regardless. And the final buff is going to be towards this E ability trigger seed, where the shield value on this has also been increased by 5 at every single rank. Not the smallest buffs in the world, but not the biggest either, but it makes sense because Ivern is one of those champions where if he's over buffed, he just simply takes control of the jungle and he becomes way too strong in the jungle overall. So this is uh, some slight buffs to kind of bring him back into the game and just give him some face time overall. Next up, a nerf coming over to Kai'Sa, yet another champion like Aurelia, who people can argue is the most overpowered in League of Legends at the moment. 
But at least Kai'Sa is actually getting some actual nerfs. So starting things off with her passive second skin, the passive proc damage has been overall decreased to now dealing 15% of the target's missing HP plus 2.5% per 100 HP rather than 15% and 3.75% extra damage per 100 AP. So in other words, it'll just be less effective against tankier opponents, but against squishier opponents, it really shouldn't be that much of a difference. But that's not it, because as we move on to her ultimate, Killer Instinct, the shield duration on this has also been lowered from 3 seconds down to 2 seconds. Now this one shouldn't affect her too, too much, I mean, it'll still obviously hurt her a bit in team fights, but at the end of the day, you use your ultimate to really reposition, to go in for the kills, rarely do you actually use it for the shield itself, other than maybe a very close 1v1, which isn't as often as in my opinion opinion, you use it in team fights to just go in, to go for the kills, to go for the cleanup and all that stuff. So this will definitely bring Kai'Sa down a couple of notches, but I don't think it'll make her just completely weak and just unpickable. Following this, we also have a buff coming over to Karthus. Now, Karthus is a champion that you don't see very often unless it's a one-trick playing them, so this will be pretty interesting. The buffs are as follows. Starting with his W, Wall of Pain, the mana cost has been lowered by 30, and the cooldown has also been lowered by 3 seconds, which is actually quite a bit. But it doesn't stop there just yet, because as we move on to his ultimate, Requiem, the mana cost has also been lowered at this ability from starting at 150 and going all the way up to 200 at rank 3 to now only being 100 mana at all ranks. So even though the damage has just overall been untouched, which thank god it is, this also means that Karthus may actually have different build paths now because they won't be as mana reliant since his mana costs just have went down quite a bit. The question still stands, is this going to be enough to bring Karthus back into the meta because he is one of those kind of weird kind of niche champions, so I guess time will tell and we'll find out in the next patch. Following Karthus, we have some buffs coming over to Karma, and this is going to be a fairly quick one where her W, Focused Resolve, the root duration on this ability has actually just been overall increased across the board, but as you rank it up to rank 5, it evens out at 2 seconds again. This is a bit more of a buff than it seems as well, because even just a 0.4 second increase on our roots, that is a lot when it comes to actual team fights. Just 0.4 seconds is the difference between living and dying in many situations. So don't be too surprised if you maybe start seeing Karma mid lane or maybe even Karma support a little bit more frequently, because again, her W is actually much more powerful now. But let's move along and talk about the next buff coming out, and it's going to be towards Zack, and this is going to be towards his Q ability Stretching Strikes, where the damage has been increased by 10 at rank 1, but a total of 30 by rank 5. Now at first this might seem like a pretty disgusting buff because 30 extra damage for Zack's Q considering he's a tank is actually quite a bit, but you have to keep in mind that most people actually max his Q ability last. So this might mean that people will max his Q ability second now after the E ability being first. And if that becomes true then I'm not entirely sure if this is actually overall a buff because I don't know if that's even better than still maxing your W second as I personally don't play Zack. So I guess with this one time will tell and we'll see what people start doing and we'll see if Zack suddenly just becomes a lot more prevalent in solo queue and just dominates every single game. But the final change coming to the champions is going to be the most questionable one for sure. It's going to be towards Zoe. Now this is where I'm sure a lot of people are going to be quite displeased, but let's go into the actual buffs to see what's happening. Starting off with her Q ability, Paddlestar, the damage has overall been increased. So we're now essentially as you rank up the ability, the extra base damage that it offers, you can see, is actually going to just be higher. It still starts at 50 at rank 1, but as you rank it up, it's 5 extra damage by rank 2. And then it's a total of another 20 base extra damage by rank 5. Now thankfully her actual AP ratios is still remaining at 60 and the damage increased based on your actual level is also the same. But at the same time, it doesn't stop there just yet because there's also a buff coming over to her E ability, Sleepy Trouble of Bubble. The cooldown on this ability has been lowered as you rank it up to now being 2 seconds less by rank 5. So what does that mean? Well, it means that not only will her Q ability just do more damage, but it also means that her E ability will be shot out more frequently. I'm sure almost every single person playing League of Legends is not going to be happy about these buffs because let's be honest, no one really likes to face a Zoe. Even if you're a Zoe main, if you're facing a Zoe, you're probably going to be quite unhappy about it as well. So let's just pray that this is not enough to make Zoe OP again, though again, you really never know with this champion, so I guess time will tell. Now the final couple of changes I want to talk about is going to be to two items, the first of which being Edge of Night, where the cost on this item has been lowered by 100. And on top of this, the channel duration has been lowered to 1 second from 1.5 second, and this is the channel duration that you use that gives you that Banshee's Veil type effect. So finally, at least some buffs coming over to Lethality users, though I don't think it's going to really make that much of a difference. 
But on top of this, we also have Essence Reaver, where the combined cost has been lowered by a total of 200. And this is actually quite good because, let's be honest, almost nobody is buying this item. I actually forgot this item even exists. So maybe this will make this item a little bit more tempting to buy, though I still kind of highly doubt it. The only champion I can see buying this for AD carries, at least, is going to be Lucian. And even though Lucian's already probably the best AD carry, this will make him potentially even better. But I guess we'll see. But that right there, guys, is going to be about it for this video. There you have it. A bunch of changes. We have the new events, the new orbs, some buffs coming over to champions that don't really need it. So, for instance, Zoe, Ivern, Karthus even as well. That could probably use some buffs, actually. But we also have some uh, questionable nerfs coming over to someone like Irelia, who definitely could have used much more than a slap on the wrist. But either way, guys, if you did enjoy this video, then definitely hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Check out my other videos as well. But thank you all so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you for my next video. So until then, have a great day. Peace.